This is the stump Prometheus. At the time of its discovery, it was the oldest living tree on Earth, in ancient Great Basin Bristol Cone Pine, thriving near the harsh timber line of Nevada's Wheeler Peak. In 1964, however, the unthinkable happened. The United States Forest Service authorized cutting down this majestic specimen. How could an agency tasked with protecting public lands and natural wonders oversee what could be called the worst alpine murder of all time? Even now, controversy rages. Was the felling of Prometheus the result of an honest but tragic mistake? Or was it caused by sheer negligence or worse, indifference? Bristol cone pines are the longest living non-clonal life on Earth. Many specimens reach and quite possibly surpass 5,000 years in age. These trees only grow in the sparse, rocky soils of high elevation areas near treeline in the western United States, places characterized by extreme cold, aridity, and relentless winds. Their survival hinges on a suite of remarkable adaptations. An older Bristol cone pine often retains only a narrow ribbon of living bark, while the rest of the trunk stands as dead wood. This partially alive structure doesn't rot. The wood is so resinous and dense that it erodes slowly over centuries, rather than decaying in the usual sense. Bristol cones owe their longevity to their ability to survive in stressful environments where competition is minimal. Their extremely slow growth rate yields incredibly strong wood that resists the ravages of time. In the end, even the oldest trees succumb to the unstoppable effects of exposure, weather-driven abrasion, lightning strikes, and the constant stress of a hostile alpine environment. Because Bristol Cone Pines have the oldest continuously datable tree rings, their value to science is immense. Through dendrochronology, researchers can trace climatic history across millennia. In 1964, Donald Curry was a graduate student from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. He traveled to eastern Nevada's Snake Range to study climactic conditions during the so-called Little Ice Age. Curry was interested in using tree rings from old bristlecone pines for this purpose. Curry discovered that an unusually large twisted pine, which had been named Prometheus, might offer a detailed record of weather patterns he was interested in. The standard tool for studying old trees without seriously harming them is an increment borer, a long, specialized drill that extracts a thin core, preserving the growth rings. Sources differ on what went wrong. Some accounts suggest that his borer broke during use, while others point to Prometheus's undulating growth patterns, which made it impossible to reach the tree's center with his equipment. If true, the latter is especially ironic. Experienced dendrochronologists later noted that coring dead wood sections could have safely dated the tree without cutting it down. Whatever the truth, Curry found himself facing the end of his field season without the samples he needed. As a result, he sought or was offered permission to cut a cross section of the trunk instead. At this time, nobody knew that Prometheus was in fact the oldest living tree on Earth. It merely looked old and appeared to be a suitable candidate for a full ring analysis, an apparently random choice that would prove disastrous. By the time anyone realized the great age hidden in those tree rings, it was too late. One voice of dissent emerged, that of Keith Trexler, then serving as a park naturalist. Trexler was reportedly horrified at the notion of cutting an ancient bristlecone pine, particularly one so large and potentially irreplaceable. He questioned why scientists would fell such a treasure for research that might be accomplished with smaller, less destructive samples or different methods. Yet the combined forces of academic ambition, official permissions, and logistical constraints ultimately overrode his objections. The decision to cut was sanctioned by Donald Cox, who, at the time, saw no insurmountable reason to refuse Donald Curry's request. Accounts differ as to whether Curry actively lobbied for approval, 
or whether the Forest Service simply offered the suggestion once his increment borer failed. Once Curry had official permission, in August 1964, a work crew set about the difficult task. One Forest Service sawman, upon arriving at the site on August 6, 1964, refused outright to fell the tree, citing its age and significance. Yet the following day, Donald Cox personally led the effort, wielding the saw himself. Their work yielded thousands of pounds of dead wood, of which only a small fraction was transported for study. The majority was simply discarded in a pile next to the stump. The cutting of Prometheus sparked widespread outrage after its true age was discovered, revealing it to be the oldest known non-clonal organism, and remains one of the most controversial conservation incidents in history. Public backlash, once the story got out, was intense. Journalists, conservationists, and fellow scientists questioned how such a venerable organism could be felled in the name of research. Conservationists like Darwin Lambert decried it as the murder of Earth's oldest living organism. Galen Rowell described the stump as, quote, one of the most repugnant sights. The Forest Service downplayed the loss, claiming that other trees of similar age existed. Yet this dismissal only fueled the controversy. In his paper, where he published this uncomfortable discovery, Curry seems almost terse when alluding to the tree's fate. He describes collecting sections for ring analysis, while making no mention of the destruction needlessly wrought to obtain them. By framing the event in the passive voice, saying only, a horizontal slab was removed, he seems to be sidestepping direct responsibility. Prometheus was somewhere between 4,862 and 5,000 years old, surpassing any living tree known at that time. Donald Curry faced significant backlash. Critics questioned why a 5,000-year-old tree needed to be cut down in order to gather tree ring data for the Little Ice Age, which took place only 600 years ago. Feeling the weight of this controversy, Curry eventually changed fields. Today, remnants of Prometheus are scattered. Small slices can be found at the Great Basin National Park Visitor Center, the Ellie Convention Center in Nevada, the Laboratory of Tree Ring Research at the University of Arizona, and possibly other institutions. The original stump still sits atop Wheeler Peak and attracts hikers familiar with its provenance. In the same grove, other bristle cones, some already dead for millennia, are still eerily preserved. Much of human history unfolded during the long life of this tree. When Prometheus was just a sapling, the pyramids of Giza were being constructed. At 500 years old, the Epic of Gilgamesh was first recited in Mesopotamia. By a thousand years, Hammurabi had inscribed his Code of Laws. At 2,000 years, Homer composed his epics, and by 2,500 years, the Buddha achieved enlightenment. By its 2,900th year, Jesus of Nazareth was born. At 3,100 years, William the Conqueror defeated Harold at the Battle of Hastings. Finally, in 1964, it was cut down under the pretext of scientific research. In the aftermath of this scandal, the Forest Service at Great Basin National Park became reluctant to grant researchers access to study the grove. It is unlikely that all of the trees have been thoroughly examined. It also seems more than coincidental that Curry happened to select the oldest tree in the grove entirely by accident. It has been suggested that even older trees, both living and dead, may still lie within the grove, their ages yet undiscovered. The modern oldest living tree is Methuselah, which still survives in California. The cautionary tale of Prometheus has led to stricter policies. The location of Methuselah is held secret to protect it from vandalism and careless souvenir collectors. Perhaps it will be spared the premature death suffered by its elder brother, Prometheus. So what do you think? Was this an unavoidable accident, 
or a stunning example of negligence? Let us know what you think down in the comments. If you like this kind of content and would like to see more, like and subscribe. Thank you very much.